Hello there, welcome to Craft with Fee, and welcome to week four of the Woodland Stitch Along using beautiful Tilda fabrics. So th this week we're going to be using the beautiful Aster Carmine, which is the pink and red one with the little white flowers with a little aqua center. I really love the uh, reds in this range. They are adorable and teamed with the pink, it just makes them even more beautiful. And the range also comes with sh some chambray fabrics and this is the chambray red and it matches this beautifully. So um, due to a lot of requests, I'm going to be offering a little kit this week and the kit will contain a fat eighth of both of the fabrics that you'll need. You'll have lots of leftovers because you don't need a full, full fat eighth. Um, and you'll also get the thread and a pre-printed stitchery panel. And you can see there that there's a lovely stitchery on that. Now, um, you can find this in my store, which is fifiandme.com. You um, will also get a little instructional sheet which has got the measurements and everything on it as well which will come with this but anyway if you've got your own um, items you can just make it without a little kit you will need a stitchery that will fit on this panel here I'll give you the measurements for that in a moment but anyway here is mine so this is what we're going to need we're going to need a piece of stitchery fabric and in my case I'm using a white hanky linen and this measures eight and a half inches in length by three and a half inches in width and the one in the kit's a little bit bigger than that so that you can cut it down. So I've just stitched all of this in back stitch except for the centre part of the flower that I've done in a satin stitch. So you will need to have that. You will also need to cut your main fabric. You'll need an eight and a half inch square of the main fabric. And then you will also need two pieces that are three inches wide by eight and a half inches uh, in length said that probably around the wrong way but anyway and then you'll need two pieces of lining fabric and in my case I'm using the matching chambray because it goes beautifully with this and they are both eight and a half inches square okay so the first thing that we need to do is we need to make um, our panel for the front of the little basket so we're going to join one of these three inch squares to the top and to the bottom of our stitchery panel so if you just stitch along with a quarter inch seam and then we'll come back. And there we go. The little rectangles are now sewn on the top and the bottom of the stitchery panel. So at this point, you can now pop your stitchery onto the panel so you can get it lovely and centred. The reason I didn't put it on before um, was because it's a lot easier to stitch it when you've got the outside pieces as well. So it's, it's a lot easier to handle when it's sewn with the outside pieces. Okay, so we're going to now do the stitching. And then we can give it a lovely press. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pop the outside pieces on top of one another with the right sides together. And then we're going to do some squares in the bottom of this panel so that we can cut out a little box bottom. So we're going to be doing a two inch square. And so we need to take our ruler and just measure a two inch square in the bottom right and left corners. So make sure that your stitchery is up the right way when you're doing this. So that's the right way. The little leaves on my stitchery is going down. But you can use whatever stitchery that you want. I did mention a little while ago that I was going to um, allow you to be able to use your own stitcheries. If you've bought one of the kits that we uh, sold a little while ago to do this stitch along, you will have an iron on transfer for this. But the other alternative is if you want that stitchery, you can just buy the little kit. The little kit's only $12.50. Um, so it's really, really economical. As I said, you get two fat eighths in that. You get the stitchery panel and you get a thread. So it's really, really quite economical. Okay, so we've got our two inch squares there already in the bottom of our out, outer piece. And then we're going to do our lining. Now, I have to be honest, I found it really difficult to find the right and wrong side of the chambray. I don't really think there's much difference. So, but if you're using something that's not chambray, you do need to put your lining pieces together with the right sides facing. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pop a two inch square in both corners. So I'm using a friction pen here. This is one that will come off with heat. Um, you can use something that's permanent if you want because you're going to cut out on that line anyway. So it's not going to matter too much. So we're just do that in the bottom right and left hand corners once again and now what we're going to do is we're going to pin or clip them together so that they are nice and even before we cut these squares out now the reason we're going to be doing that is because we want to 
make sure that when we're cutting it that it's not going to move too much so that's a pretty important step and I'm doing them both at the same time so that I can take them over to the sewing machine at the same time you don't want to be getting up and down to the machine continuously if you can get as many steps as you can done at once it makes the process so much easier now I've put the clips on at this point because you can't get a nice even square when you've got clips or pins already on this. You need to do the drawing of your squares first. So what we're going to do now is just we're going to get a pair of scissors and we're just going to cut those squares out. And don't throw those squares away because if you do English paper piecing, they will fit um, a shape. So waste not, want not. Okay, so that is our piece of lining done. And then we'll do the same thing with our outside piece. So this little basket's quite timely for Easter. You could actually make a little Easter basket as well and pop some Easter eggs in it. Um, you could pop fabric in it. You can use it as a thread bin. Lots and lots of uses for this. And you could even make it for a non-sewing friend and put some chocolates and bits and pieces in it and they can keep it as a keepsake. Okay, so we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to stitch down both of these sides here on the outside piece. And then we're going to stitch across the bottom. Okay? And then on the piece for the lining, we're going to mark a turning area. So we're going to mark it to be about two and a half inches in width. So you can do that on one side. It doesn't matter which side that you decide to do it on, but just make sure that you mark it so that you remember to stop and start. So what you need to do is to stitch from the corner down to your first mark. Make sure you do a locking stitch at the start and um, at the finish. And what I mean by a locking stitch is that you need to go backwards and forwards for a couple of stitches and that will stop this opening from fraying. Then you need to sew from this bottom mark down to this bottom corner of where your cutout is. And then on the other side, you're just going to stitch from one end to the other. And then, of course, you can stitch across the bottom as well. We'll do all that and then we'll come back. All done. So we're going to now take our outside piece and we're going to pop our hand inside. And you can see here that we now have this opening. So what we're going to do is we're going to match this seam here to this side seam here and we're just simply going to do that the way that we always match seams and that is to have one going in one direction and the other going in the opposite direction now you want to be able to have them lay against one another I've talked about this in many of my videos you will actually feel when the two seams lay down properly against one another so you can see there that they are actually laying in opposite directions so we're going to pop a clip in there and then we are also going to pop a clip on either side so that we go right along to that end of that cut that we've made. And we are going to then stitch directly across there with a quarter inch seam. And we're going to do the same to the other side. But what you need to remember on the other side is that you need to have this seam going in the same direction as it is on this side. Otherwise your bottom won't sit properly. So that is very important that you do do that. Okay, so once again, we're just going to rub those together until they sit nicely and play together. And then we will do the same here. Now we're going to do the exact same thing to the lining. So you can do your outside piece um, and sew those across. And you can see just by looking at it that you're going to get a lovely big flat bottom. And we'll do the same thing to the lining and then we'll come back. All done. So the outside of the little basket needs to be turned into the right side now so that you have it looking like this. You can just check your seams here to make sure that you've got them looking okay. They should join in a beautiful junction there so that uh, you can see there that they do. And that's a great way of getting a perfect boxed bottom. Okay, now the lining piece, you can just keep the way that it is. So you want the wrong side facing out. We're going to pop the outside of our little basket 
inside the lining. And we've done this a few times with different projects. This is the way that you always um, make a lined bag or item. And what you're going to do at this point is you are going to do the exact same thing as you did before. You're going to line up these seams at the sides. You're going to marry them together. So one is going in one direction and the other is going in the opposite direction. And then that will give you a lovely seam and you're going to pop a clip in there to keep it that way. You're then going to go over to the other side and you're going to do the exact same thing. So you're going to lay them in opposite directions like that and then you are going to just clip them and then you can just clip around the top edge there now. You'll find that if your measurements um, were perfect at eight and a half inches and that you've been using a quarter inch seam that this will match perfectly. You won't have any extra fabric. It's just going to sit. I've got that one clipped a bit. Oopsie. Okay. So then we're going to take this over to the machine and we are going to stitch all the way around the top using a quarter of an inch. And by the magic of video, that's what it looks like when it's done. Okay. So now we're going to go to that opening in the side seam that we have here. You can see here and the reason we've got the locking stitch is so that it's got a bit of um, strength to it and we can turn our little bag or thread basket or whatever you want to call call yours through the hole you can do it gently just tease it through the hole um, if you've made it at two and a half inches is big enough to not cause you too much stress and you might have a few loose threads you can see there my junction on the side, on the bottom, is good. Happy with that. So poke your little corners through with your finger. You don't need a pokey tool for this because it's not that difficult. And then we're going to take this now over to the iron and we're going to iron that little opening closed and then we're just going to top stitch it. Now if you want it to be invisible, you can do it by hand and do a little blind stitch. That's up to you. And there we go, all stitched closed. So we're going to pop the inside of our little thread basket now into the outside and just poke it into the little corners there and you'll get a lovely seam at the top. You can see there. Now you can go through now and give that a little bit of a press if you wish, which I will go and do. Okay, that's the top of our little basket pressed. Now you can go ahead and press this uh, by putting something on the inside of it. Um, you can use like a book or something like that just to get that lovely flat structure of something being inside. Or as somebody else has suggested once before, you can use um, a hair straightening iron if you have one. But I've just used my iron for now. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to simply fold over the top of this little basket. Now you can top stitch this if you wish uh, because um, they, I always usually you know, top stitch anything that I'm turning turning in like this but because I'm going to be turning over the top of the basket I don't really want that sort of look so I'm not going to, to, to do that. So we're just going to turn it over a tiny bit so that we can still see that carmine fabric through the top and then you can see there that we have a beautiful little basket. Isn't it gorgeous? I will pop a photo um, in with it sort of set up so that you can see it with some contents inside. But that's what the little basket is going to look like. So it actually is a square, a square little bucket. Um, and you can store whatever you want in it. So there you go. I hope that you've enjoyed today's little tutorial. As mentioned before, we do have some of these kits available. $12.50 um, and you can get those at fifiandme.com. I'll chat with you next time. Bye for now.